Hello and welcome again to the Fusion Tidbit videos from erpwebtutor.com. And in this video, we are going to show you how to create an absence element to be used for integration with payroll. If you have previously worked on absence module, especially in release 11 and 12, you should be familiar with the process of how to create an absence element, uh, especially if you want to process those absence element uh, in payroll and you want to pay the employee for the absence earnings. So if somebody takes a personal leave and applies for it, the person needs to be paid a personal leave of whatever number of hours, uh, and it has to be paid through payroll. Now that had actually a very complicated set of steps where you had to create the absence element and you had to create the earnings element. So this is release 13. A lot has been simplified, so I'm going to show you how the process has changed and how you can easily create the absence element. So I'm in the payroll calculation work area, as you can see. From my taskbar, I'm going to manage elements. And here I'm going to click on the plus icon, select my legislative data group. The primary classification is still going to be absences because this is an absence element. The secondary classification, depending on what you're creating, you need to choose that. So let me select other. The category defaults to absence. Click on continue. Enter the name of the element. In this case, it's going to be personal leave. Enter the reporting name. For effective date, I always prefer to use January 1st, 1951. Select the input currency, US dollar. Now, you will notice that when we create the absence element, there are some additional questions that has been introduced. So, especially if you are a payroll customer, which means your customer is going to process payroll in Oracle HCM Cloud, you are going to see some different set of questions when you create your elements. And that set of questions has changed in the absence module, which, which is what I'm trying to show. So this part is the same, what calculation units are used for reporting. If the absences are, are calculated in hours, it's gonna be hours. It's gonna be, if it is in days and days, I'm gonna select hours. The work units conversion rule, I'm going to select assignment working hours rate annualized and I want to transfer both accrual balances and absences to payroll because I want to process my absences absence earnings to payroll. Click next and here you will find the additional set of questions. Do you want to calculate absence liability? This question was all, all was already there. So uh, in this case I'm not calculating any absence liability because this is not getting paid out. Does this plan enable balance payments when enrollment ends? Now, again, these are the standard questions that controls the number of elements that is going to be generated. Now, I don't want to pay out. Uh, the balances are not going to be paid. So no, partial payment is gonna be no. So if you notice here, if you select yes, then you need to select what rate you're gonna use to pay the, the balance or the partial payment. Okay. Now, if I select the balances are gonna be paid, there's some additional questions that you will see here. If, say for example, your PTO or, or vacation, which is usually paid out by most companies, so in that case, you need to choose at what rate uh, you want to tax the, the payout amount. And normally it is going to be supplemental, but this is something that you probably want to check with your client uh, on what rate or at what rate they want to tax. Now, before this question was not there, so again, I see that something has been introduced to new. So, but I'm just gonna set it to no. I think the same sort of question is going to appear. If you want to make partial payment, what rate and at what tax, what kind of taxation rule you want to apply. Okay. Now, this is also a new question. How do you want to reduce earnings for employees not entering a time card? You're gonna say reduce regular. 
that's the only choice, pretty much that's the default choice, or you can also select the rate to determine the deduction amount. Okay, I'm going to use reduce regular. How do you want absence payment to be taxed? This is the actual absence payment, not the payout. So these questions you can see if, probably if you are working on release 12 uh, are not there, it's there in release 13. So I want to tax my absence payment, the actual absence taken uh, at, at a supplemental rate, uh, at a regular rate, whereas in cases, in most cases, the payouts would be taxed at a supplemental rate. So was this earning be calculated? I'm going to select yes and yes, but please check with your client what you need to select. So I click next. This is my review page and I'm going to hit submit. That will create my absence element. And I will also walk you through the additional elements that got created. So now my element has been created. Now what I need to do is I need to create the element eligibility for the, the main absence element, which is personal leave in this case. So I click on element eligibility actions, create element eligibility. I normally put the same name as the element name if I'm just creating one uh, element link or eligibility. And we can leave everything open. So submit. Now I click done. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to search for this element that I just created, personal leave and just click on search. Now you can see that all these elements, this is the main element, the accrual element, uh, but you can see, if you notice, the leave entitlement element is basically the earnings element that got calculated. Previously, this is the element that we had to create manually uh, in order to process the, the payment through payroll. Because the absence element, uh, you cannot, apply taxes on the absence element. So that's why we had to create an earnings element. Now that element now gets created automatically when you create the absence element. Now what we need to do in order to make this whole thing work is we need to uh, create the eligibilities appropriately for the entitlement element. So let me do that. So I'm going to copy the name of this element and I'm going to create the eligibility uh, as of the element creation date. So that's why I set my effective date to 1151. I select and create the element eligibility. And I also need to create an eligibility for the results element and the retro element. So same way, and you also can enter your costing information on the result element. So let me create this eligibility. Similarly, you can go ahead and create the, the eligibility for the retro element as well. So once you have created, the links or eligibilities for these elements. Now we're going to go move on to the next step, which is adding this element to the balances. For that, let me navigate to the balance definition screen. And from the payroll calculation work area, I can just go to manage balance definition. I'm going to search for standard earnings which is going to be the, the main balance against which I need to add this particular entitlement result element. So I want to change this effective date again to 1151. And in the balance feeds, I'm going to add this personal leave element.
Now, one thing is important here. I need to add the entitlement results element. So personal leave entitlement earnings results. So that is the key here. And if your element has a final disbursement, uh, which is pro probably the case for PTO or vacation elements, and those are supplemental tax, if that's how you have defined, then you need to add those, the final disbursement earnings results element to the supplemental earnings balance. So let's say earnings calculated, add. So now this will be added to my earnings and then taxes will be calculated as per this particular earnings. So I'm going to hit submit. And I'm done with the balance part. The last part of it is actually to run the payroll and see how the, the personal leave uh, gets taxed. So now I have already entered the, the personal leave for this employee uh, for this particular payroll. And now I'm going to run the, the quick pay just to see how the absence hours are or the personal leave hours are reported. So quick pay, simplified quick pay. And you can already see that the personal leave entitlement element is already populated. Now this person is actually an hourly employee. So I have entered some hours so that uh, the person can get uh, some earnings from his regular hours as well. So once everything is ready, I'm gonna click on submit. And now you can see this is the result of my quick pay run. And here you can see that the gross pay for this employee is $3,700. And if you can just, uh, if you expand that how this gross earnings got calculated, you can see that this 2,500 came from this, 2,500 came, that 1,000 came from another regular hours. And then this 200 is actually the, the earnings from the, the personal leave entitlement. And if you just uh, expand this or just keep your cursor, you will see that this is referring to the personal leave entitlement earnings results element. That is the one that is getting displayed. And if you also expand the absence area, you will see that this personal leave entitlement earnings result, the same element is also showing you the $200 that this employee earned through this leave. So that basically demonstrates how you can create an absence element when you are integrating with Oracle Cloud Payroll. Thank you for watching. And if you do like the video, please visit us at www.erpwebtutor.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel and just like the video. Thank you.